Hi, I'm Nicholas Bertner with School of Permaculture. And before I get into this tip today, I just want to pan the camera around just a bit. Behind me is what happens when earthworks go terribly wrong. There are very few type 1 errors in permaculture, but they're, they're called type 1 errors because if you install them incorrectly, they can cost you a lot of time, energy, and money to make up for later on down the road. So I'm in this pond right now, and we're in Bonham, Texas, which is kind of northeast Texas, on an up-and-coming permaculture, self-reliant, and producing farm. But one of the issues that the client ran into is that this pond is never full. So as I come out here and I take a look at it, it was put in to harvest water from a creek that is behind the pond. So what we learn in a permaculture design course and what we learn in an earthworks course and in any type of earth moving, if you're going to put a pond in, you put it in such a way that it captures water from the natural curve or contours of the landscape. The previous owners put this pond in because they were thinking from a lack mentality and needing to bring in resources from outside, either a creek or a river, this time it's a creek, and instead of having the permaculture abundance mentality to where this pond and the water features on it are, are replenishing the creek or replenishing aquifers. And if you want to learn more about that type of mentality, come and take a, per, uh, a permaculture earthworks course or a permaculture design course, either with us or anywhere. So what do you do when you're in this situation? You go on a client site and it's like, look, this pond doesn't do anything. Uh, it, it would have looked nice if it could, if it would stay full, but from what I understand, the, the previous owner had full reign to, a, to an earth mover, so he was just in here carving away, and now the pond never really holds water. It, the, it rained just the other day, so that's the water behind me. So, we have come up with a number of solutions, but uh, the one that we're going to go with is actually a solution that a student of mine named Tom Lin, Tom Lin, who come up with, and he came out here on an open consultation with me. Uh, he's actually holding the camera. Hey, Tom. <laughs> uh, before we go into that technique, uh, let's just talk about a couple of other techniques we could have done. Uh, swales and diversion drains are water catchment arms that reach out into the landscape that bring water into the pond. We could have done that. Uh, what we then kind of decided to do here was put a greenhouse in here and make it an underground greenhouse or a wall of peony. So that would be quite exciting. However, taking this pond out left a dearth of a water feature that, you know, that is very pretty. So we had to really kind of combine some techniques in this one. We're going to fill in most of this pond with the current pond wall and create an enclosure that still allows sunlight in to go ahead and create an underground greenhouse for growing for the production orchards that will be on this farm. So closer back to zone one, we're going to have a greenhouse next to the house, but here in the zone two slash zone three area, we're going to convert this pond into an underground greenhouse which allows us control to make slope on this side, on the downhill side, which then we can go in and put a smaller pond feature with water catchment arms like swales on the back side. So these are some tips and tricks that we can do when in this situation. So guys, that's our tip for the day. This is how you could design your way out of type one errors that have already been installed, but really, you don't want to put them in because it takes extra time and money and energy to get out of them. Guys, I love you. You rock. Go to our website, schoolofpermaculture.com. Tell your friends about it. We have just started an aid 
an orphanage program to now every one of your dollars that comes from a course or from a consultation goes to helping out these different sites. And we've, we've got some coming up in the next year in Haiti and in India, possibly Africa and Mexico. So we love you. We love every bit of support that we can get from you. Come and take a course in any one of these locations. I love you. You guys rock. And I'll see you next time.